All right, today is Friday, and we are harvesting for our 12th farmer's market. It's a pretty chilly day today. It's around 55 degrees to start out with. Um, the hardest thing about these harvest days is actually recording constantly and making a vlog about, about a harvest day because it's so intense. It's not as intense as what you're about to see. So Henry, two days ago, he was um, driving the red truck up the top of the hill and a few things fell out of the back of the truck and he went out to go get it he parked it put it in gear went out to get it and the truck backed over his leg and broke his fibula so now he's out in the field with a garbage bag over his cast and he's harvesting so it's pretty amazing nothing stops this guy not even a truck uh, right now I'm harvesting um, red amaranth for the farmer's market. Uh, this stuff is amazing. Love it, it's great. The reason why it's so hard to videotape uh, the harvest is because everything you see at the market is harvested in one day. So on Fridays we wake up right as the sun crests over the trees and we can see what color we can tell. If we can see what color this leaf is, that's when we start working on Fridays. In like early July, it's around 4.30 in the morning currently now it's around 520 also depends on if it's cloudy or if it's not and we have to harvest the entire field everything that's ready to go must get harvested otherwise you're just wasting money you're wasting dollars and it's like you spend all this time planting weeding it and then uh, if you needed to irrigate it, you're irrigating it then you don't get to harvest it so it's very important to go as fast as you possibly can so this doesn't leave a lot of time for videotaping um, so we harvest everything in one day for the farmer's market, which makes it especially difficult to make, uh, make vlogs. But I have created, um, I've been vlogging a little bit here and there for all the harvests um, for the last 12 weeks. So these are, from the last 12 weeks, these are the clips that I've been taking. Is that a garbage bag? <laughs> um, so these fresh part rows um, from here until it's been tilled down can be cleaned out whatever it is in there that's good enough rusty to take. Um, it's not good for us, just leave it. Today is Friday, it's our first, uh, we're harvesting for our first farmer's market right here. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on here because there's so much shrubbery. But, uh, right now I'm getting some, uh, some spinach. I just finished harvesting a green called Stellaria, which sounds like a, an antidepressant. Uh, if consumed, side effects include extreme happiness, great skin, and loss of appetite. Today is Friday. We are harvesting for our sixth farmer's market. It's raining outside a lot. About 50% of the harvest is we haven't been raining. This one's pretty bad. It's about uh, 8 o'clock. We've harvested uh, 26 boxes of spinach. We've been harvesting since 4.45 this morning. And we also have uh, all this lettuce done here and then there's more stuff out there. All right, today's harvest day is a special harvest day. Today is Zoe's last day on the farm. This is Zoe right here. She's been on the farm since 1993. <laughs> and across the short way, you put a line all the way across one way, and then across the other way. 
and then you know when we're doing full boxes keep coming all the way up to the top um, you never want to overfill boxes because you know they're gonna get stacked on top of each other so make sure you're filled only to the top of the box don't let them explode up the top or else they'll just get crushed same thing we want to it'll fit in the short way so we'll put it in across this way It doesn't have to be exactly like one layer to one layer. I put a, I put a couple on, kind of on top there. That's okay, but just basic idea. And then, like then we're not gonna do any roots today. But when we start doing roots, roots are a whole different system. Maybe we'll wait for roots to talk about roots. Don't be afraid to push them right up against, even if they're bent a little bit. Like don't, if you got one like that. Don't think it has to be like that, or else you'll have a big gap on the edge. And the more, the tighter we can pack stuff. The, the less air is in there to dry stuff out. So a good, nicely packed box helps a lot with just keeping the stuff out. Today is Friday. This is our third harvest at uh, the break of dawn. And we are at the other property getting some radishes. Uh, you have to take off a lot of these bad leaves. Not worried so much about holes, but brown looking leaves. And if you accidentally pull out an onion, just push it back in. And there, are, there will be some splits like that. And some ones with um, scab, brown scab, black scab. Um, so, so far we've only bunched up uh, greens um, with roots. First of all, with greens they go in the box, they get washed, they stay in the box. They never get taken back out of the box until they get to market. But uh, radish, I'm going to have to take out all these and wash them. So they're going to come back out of the box. So the most important thing is two things. One, that we're gonna, I'm going to be able to get them back out of the box easily without uh, when I go to wash them. And the second thing is, we don't want to put them in the box where roots will be on top of greens. Because then when they get dumped into the water, all this dirty mud is going to go onto the greens and it's going to make it harder for me to, to wash too. So, um, these are going to go in. Everything else we were overlapping tops. With roots, we don't want to do any overlapping. Because if we overlap, they're long enough that if we put them in this way, they're going to be overlapping. And then when I try to go to grab this one, it's going to get all tangled up with these on the other side. And that's going to make it difficult for me to, to work with. So if, they're over, if the leaves are overlapping, then you got to go the other direction. Like that. But these little guys here, they're fine. They can go in like this. So they're going to go all the way across like that. All the way across like that. And then you're just going to come right up. You're not going to do any of this crisscrossing. Oh, sorry, you're not going to do any of this crisscrossing. It's all going to be, and it's always uh, roots to the outside of the box, whether you're doing it the, the long way or the short way. Okay. Alright, so the radish are always, there's going to be some times when radish are going to, the tops are going to go all the way to here. And then in that case, you'll just go straight up like that, all the way across like that. And there will be times when they're really tiny, short like this, when you can fit them on either side. When you, when you make your bunch, put the twisty around and then cut off your ends. A lot of times it gets ends up too uh, short, and then this is going to come off. Or there was one that was all the way falling apart already. So uh, when we cut off the ends, cut off the ends and put the twisty on. Don't put the twisty on and cut off the ends. Okay. There Today's Friday, and it's our very first harvest, and it's raining out.
right, it wasn't too long ago that we had planted in this bed a double crop of parsnips and we transplanted onions on the north edge. And so now today, Evan and I, Evan's right down there. Uh, we're gonna pull all the onions out of this bed and allow the parsnips to continue growing. You can see the, uh, right down here, the parsnips are actually quite large as well as the onions. So, this one right here. So it's a pretty good size, it's about, I can barely wrap my fingers around there, but it's a pretty good size onion. So this is a great way of doing multiple crops in the same bed, onions and parsnips. We're gonna clear out everything, he, all the fennel. So first thing I wanna show you is um, how high to cut them. Anywhere from like about that high, this is gonna, so what we're doing is we're trying to cut them so we can get uh, side shoots. And wherever a leaf was gonna come off, we'll probably get a side shoot from under here. We'll probably get one right there. So we'll probably get at least four off of this one right here, maybe even more. And then this one, we'll probably get one, two, three, probably get six out of that one. So that's what we're kind of looking for between four and six. So first cut of basil, <clears throat> we want to make lots of side shoots. So what you're going to do is you're going <clears> to, <throat> remember there, there could be several plants per clump. You want to have uh, two whorls of leaves, and you can count that whorl that's all the way at the, or, or suckers I should say. So I got this one down here at the bottom. And then I got my next one right here. My next one, there's two beside each other. So I want to cut it between the second and the third right there. Roma is starting right here. It's one you basically do by feel. So look for, look for the really red ones. And they should have a little bit of a, a little bit of a give to them. Yeah, they don't have a so, and they also tend to fall off the vine really easy. Every feel, feel like this feel like. Compared to. So this is no good? It's, I wouldn't have picked that one. And you're not just feeling the tip, you're feeling the whole body? Oh uh, yeah, kind of in the, in the about here maybe. Because they will, squeeze they will. in with the pressure you're putting on that tomato, just like squeeze me. <laughs> so I, okay. Not much. Yeah, if you squeeze too much, then you create a bruise and then it's soft. Gotcha. <laughs> like, oh, the tomato's ripe. It's, it's ripe. totally ripe. It's all ripe. Splat, splat, splat. Isn't that that? Dig it, grab it right away at the top. Check out all the little stuff. And they'll get rid of a lot of little leaves that way. Then start looking for flea beetle damage or old looking leaves. There's a couple of leaves that pull out. Try not to get in the habit of, a lot of times people will want to, I'm going to cut again and they'll, they'll lay down what they have in their hand and cut again. By the time you lay that down, pick it back up again, it's going to be all out of order and you have to rearrange it all. So as much as possible, always try to keep your bunch in your hand until you're ready to bunch it up rather than laying stuff down. Say every once in a while we'll have stuff big enough that you might have to lay it down. You should empty your full bunch right off the bat. Shake. A quick look through, pulling out anything, looking for bad leaves. A little bit short. Mm -hmm. Palm down. Up, up, under, through your finger here. So I'm holding it now with my finger on the bottom side. Everything I'm showing you is how to make a tight bunch, which is really important. So that's why you do it this way. Then grab it here, and I'm starting to pull on this, pulling up here to make it tight, still holding it on the bottom. And then I slide these fingers up, still squeezing the bunch tight between my fingers, and then I hold it right there. So at this point, <coughs> your bunch is not gonna get any, any tighter than it is right now. It's nice and tight there. <clears throat> then you just, you don't twist the twisty, you twist the bunch like that. Just a couple times. It doesn't take much. To, you don't want to over twist it. And then <clears throat> the last thing is um, we always keep our things in piles of three. Get in the habit right off the bat of piles of three of everything. Um, when we're out in the field, always make sure you're putting them someplace that they're going to be in the shade. If you like the shade of the next row or somewhere. But go ahead and pile them up in piles of three. And the reason for that is, <clears throat> say mustard going down this row. And I come back in 10 minutes and say, how many bunches you got? If you got piles of three, you just can count your bunches up real quick and tell me right away. It drives me nuts when I go, how many bunches you got? And 
I don't know. <laughs> and they start trying to count all their bunches that are laying in odd piles. So I always make them in piles of three. And that way if I give you a certain number too, it's a lot easier. If I tell him 30 bunches, he knows he has 10 piles. It's all about the ring. And that ring is Takori. All Takori is handcrafted in California. And all Takori is timeless. We harvest them even if they're starting to get lumpy. They're still edible at this stage. But they're best. This is about perfect. Got that feel to it. To the cooler. Let me show you how things go in the cooler. Thank mm -hmm. you. 